repeating that uh, we are studying Indian modern writing and uh, modern India. So if we study modern Indian economics, then we would study uh, the uh, population of India in the 19th, in the 20th century on resources, then uh, uh, different aspects of econo economy uh, we would study. But once we study the culture of uh, modern India or uh, literature of modern India, culture is, uh, uh, whereas uh, uh, literature uh, is a uh, part of uh, culture because culture will include uh, uh, food and uh, clothes, uh, rituals, uh, religion, and uh, you know other uh, like houses uh, uh, and uh, festivals, uh, songs. Okay, so literature uh, is uh, uh, one area of uh, the entire uh, umbrella term called culture. And within literature, also we are we have uh, uh, literature which, which is uh, part of the print culture. That is uh, not uh, literature that comes from the folk uh, lore or comes from uh, other uh, different uh, uh, practices of literature, practices of, uh, of uh, literature or literary uh, mode and its circulation. So we are restricted to the print culture and uh, modern uh, India and the print uh, uh, culture uh, in it uh, has a lot of uh, connotations uh, in the university system, in the newspapers, uh, then with the magazines, and uh, uh, then with the uh, poems that we circulated in syllabus, uh, in schools, and uh, print culture then also uh, existed in various uh, Indian languages uh, that we call vernaculars or regional languages uh, and at the same time uh, in English. Now, uh, uh, so a modern Indian writer uh, is a bilingual or multilingual writer. Now, if we come to then what are the issues that a modern Indian writer uh, would deal with, particularly uh, say the first part of uh, modern India, uh, which is uh, uh, before the independence. So before the independence, you know, uh, you have, uh, uh, for example, Raja Rao. Raja Rao uh, 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 is in your syllabus, particularly the forward from Kanthapura. This is a novel, and then uh, there are you know writers. Okay. Uh, before the independence and they are in English and they are also in other languages uh, in Bengali or Hindi or Urdu, uh, Malayalam, Tamil and so on and so forth. So and that particular period deals with the, the freedom struggle, uh, the ideas that uh, are uh, you know about uh, uh, the, the priority of uh, uh, word, uh, political word the priority of political word was to seek freedom uh, from the uh, uh, British um, rulers. Okay, but uh, that was not uh, the only, uh, you know, uh, area where uh, literature was uh, uh, active. Okay, before, uh, be besides the political freedom, literature was also uh, active in social reforms or in uh, in giving voice to uh, internal uh, uh, relationship uh, that were you know based uh, in the feudal uh, social structure of India, and uh, then there were other issues as well. So after the independence, you have uh, another period that starts in India. Okay. Uh, in Indian uh, modern writing. This another period, uh, you know, after independence uh, will take up uh, other, you know, uh, issues. Okay, 
and uh, uh, the issue of gender or the issue of uh, uh, the women issues have been expressed in the pre-independent uh, Indian modern Indian writing. So the first part of the 20th century, we have several voices, okay? But the second part of the 20th century, that is the, uh, the uh, post-independent uh, India, where we have a constitution, okay, 1947, and the constitution uh, uh, of India is uh, in itself uh, a document. And the document is uh, one is one is 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 the light leading light of the modern Indian thought. Okay, so uh, this document uh, helps us to uh, establish our uh, universities, our uh, education system, our our sense of science, our sense of technology, our uh, uh, how we will cultivate culture, how. Uh, religion uh, and uh, how secularism and uh, what would be the status of caste, okay? Uh, all of these issues. So Constitution of India uh, is actually the document that uh, is uh, at one level, a very practical document for law, order, execution, the division of power. And uh, at the same time, it is also the visionary document that provides the vision of uh, of india and uh, the citizens of india are the or the new city or, or the uh, you know uh, new generation of india is uh, uh, to not only uh, feel associated with the immediate family immediate culture immediate uh, language but also the ultimate uh, document that is the constitution of india uh, which was uh, headed by uh, B.R. Ambedkar. Now, this is important in uh, understanding uh, literary Indian modern writing and Indian modern uh, writing and its history. So first part, the second part. Now, in the second part, uh, we see one of the most important voices, uh, women's voices uh, coming from modern Indian writing is Kamala Das. Now that is here, you see, we uh, focus uh, on Kamala Das, who she is. Kamala Das is, uh, is the writer who very clearly and distinctly spelled out the voice of women in, uh, in Indian writings. What does that mean? It means that uh, the elements of literature, or the elements of uh, poetry, elements of short story, elements of novel, she reconfigured. That is, she would not follow the laid down rules of composing literature in the sense that the literature will remain inside an unconsciously a male dominated voice or the language of male. So Kamala Das is a, is a rebel, is a revolutionary in uh, Indian writings, particularly in modern Indian writings. And uh, her narrator, for example, the narrator of her poem or the narrator of her novel is very distinct. Now that woman, the narrator, the, uh, the self of uh, the woman, okay? Uh, it reveals, it speaks so boldly that she would uh, even talk about all those areas which were otherwise considered taboo in uh, Indian writing. The way uh, Indian society brings up, uh, brings up uh, uh, their uh, girls, uh, they have a sense of uh, censorship, what to talk and what not to talk. But Kamala Das actually challenged that idea. And that idea she put aside and uh, that actually gave her a distinct uh, identity in Indian writing. 
now whether it is narrator or character or language or idioms or sensibility or sense of humor or themes she would invest her energy in very clearly bringing out a new voice that would not be appropriated voice or a homogenized voice by the so called mainstream writing so now who kamla das is what a, what are her writings and what is her standing in uh, indian uh, uh, writings and what is her con contribution i think these are certain points that i wanted to talk uh, before uh, reading this poem out so that you understand uh, that when we are reading this poem we are reading it from a very different perspective not from a neutral perspective that is the uh, voice or the narrator of uh, a work of art uh, should not be seen as uh, neutral okay so kamla das is not neutral she is a feminist voice she uh, her eye for example is uh, very distinct her eye is very distinct she does not uh, use the word i as a pronoun for an average i it is kamla das's i that signifies a certain uh, idea now uh, i read this poem so uh, we just make sense of this poem uh, my grandmother's house my grandmother's house the title uh, uh, has the word grandmother so uh, we may read or this uh, phrase may signify uh, several uh, meanings uh, this may signify past this may signify closeness this may signify how the poet was raised up during uh, her childhood and uh, uh, this may also signify that she is saying my grandmother's house she is not saying my grandfather's house so that is you know there is a you have you can always have a choice uh, you can say my grandfather's house but if you say my grandmother's house so the choice that you are making is reversing the uh, patriarchal control generally a house belongs to a father it does not belong to mother home belong to mother and uh, patriarchal society and the right to property at that time women did not have that kind of right also so Uh, i think the title itself uh, uh, speaks a lot about her commitment to uh, to very uh, carefully choose uh, the words the images and uh, the characters there is a house now far away where once so there is a ha house now far away uh, nostalgia uh, i mean in the very beginning we have uh, 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 a nostalgic tone and where once i received love then you have silence or pauses that you must read in a poem pauses silences are meaningful categories they signify in a poem they signify they signify everywhere i mean in any system of communication all kinds of pauses silences whether short or long or comma or semicolon they are meaningful units they are not just kind of barriers or blocks 
they produce meaning that woman died so this silence uh, after the silence that woman died the house withdrew the house withdrew into silence so what we see here what we uh, uh, what we uh, uh, confront is that house is made of human or living beings goods or uh, objects that are there they are links but ultimately it is a human presence a house where somebody lives for 20 years and uh, with someone if that someone dies the the house uh, to an extent also dies uh, with that person so this is you know uh, the uh, poetic uh, uh, expression of condolence okay uh, that house the that woman died and the house withdrew into silence snakes moved among books now this imagery snakes moved among books at the literal level uh, this imagery may be that uh, unwanted creatures poisonous uh, uh, creatures started living in this house and uh, the imagery also says they moved among among books okay so uh, we can think of uh, un, of uh, comprehending this expression um, as a metaphor uh, to the limit of abstract but uh, it's go it's better to not uh, explore a meaning which uh, becomes meaninglessness which which enters into meaninglessness so what we need what we should do when we are reading poetry or literature we should try comprehending and uh, uh, signifying the metaphors uh, in the real world so that what we understand can also be communicated uh, to uh, a teacher or in a copy or in our understanding so snakes moved among books i was then too young to read so her memory uh, uh, tells that she was very young not able to read uh, these these books and here you see uh, for example, I also see that uh, uh, these books were, uh, you know, infected by poisonous uh, beings and uh, she was too small or when she was very young now, when she was, uh, she was a teenager, for example, she could not understand these books or the books that uh, uh, were written by uh, male writers and they contained a different kind of uh, uh, tales, uh, mythology and uh, so on and so forth and it was not possible for her to understand what those books contain whenever she uh, visited uh, her grandmother. So uh, now this is, you know, uh, uh, I'm stretching it uh, uh, to an extent 
but uh, to only understand it at the literal meaning uh, will also not be uh, sufficient uh, uh, in decoding uh, this uh, poetic uh, expression. I was then too young to read, and my blood turned cold like the moon. So out of fear, out of fear of uh, those snakes uh, moving into these books, uh, her, her element of life would turn uh, as cold. But the expression here, cold like the moon. How often I think of going there. How often I think of going there to peer through blind eyes of windows. Now this expression, blind eyes of windows, when we say eyes are us, uh, with which you see, but blind eyes, similarly, uh, you know, when you put two contrasting uh, attributes in an expression, Okay, when you put two contrasting, so in this uh, uh, poem, there are two or three examples of uh, such attributes where, uh, where you uh, say something, but uh, one part of the adjective of something will neutralize uh, uh, the, the main uh, uh, noun. So blind eyes of windows blind eyes of windows so windows are uh, are in themselves eyes with which you can look into the external world but those eyes were blind so even if you had windows you could not see uh, now i see uh, uh, I have got a uh, notice from uh, I mean that after some time um, uh, I mean remaining time is ten minutes for the this session. So uh, there to peer through blind eyes of windows. So here this expression windows uh, you uh, used to see, but uh, are kind of eyes, but they are blind. Uh, and she is a woman, and uh, she is a girl, and she lived. She was. She she came to. Uh, she 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 is uh, talking about her grandmother's house. So, uh, was it? Is it uh, something uh, restriction <coughs> of on women to uh, look out of windows from the house? Um, Windows and women relationship has not been appreciated in patriarchal Indian society. So I'm just problematizing uh, uh, the meanings. To peer through blind eyes of windows or just listen to the frozen air. Or just listen to the frozen air. Now how can you listen to the frozen air? Air and frozen, again, you see, uh, this, uh, the two are incompatible. Uh, so uh, frozen uh, is something that uh, uh, stabilizes something, and air is something uh, which uh, uh, is a, a, a form or a state that has, that challenge the stability. So the, these are two different states. Air is the air is gaseous state, and the frozen is a, a solid state. So you see this uh, relationship. These relationships uh, um, uh, create uh, um, contradiction. The expression of contradictions. Okay, so for example. Uh, somebody is asked that you can move around, but the contradiction is that you have no place to go. Okay, so 
so contradiction uh, is something that uh, can easily control something or someone which is uh, otherwise uh, uncontrollable and uh, one sided so blind eyes of windows or just listen to the frozen air or in wild despair pick an armful of darkness pick an armful of darkness now this is also darkness is a uh, time darkness is time and what time is it it is the time when the sun has set or it is a time which is not yours or is it a time which has passed or is it a time that you can't own or is it a time which is of tragedy despair so but arm full of darkness i think this expression is also uh, very poetic uh, this is a very small poem but i think this contains more poetry than uh, certain longer poems that you have read an arm full of darkness to bring it here to lie behind my bedroom door like a brooding dog like a brooding dog so here to to lie behind my bedroom door like a brooding dog you cannot believe darling so you cannot believe uh darling so in a very affectionate voice uh speaking to the uh, audience or the reader uh you cannot believe darling can you that i lived in such a house and was proud and loved then again pauses now first pause there in the beginning the second line of the poem is followed by that woman died and here the pause is followed by i who have lost my way so the first pause the woman died and the second pause the poet who have lost her way and beg now and this woman the poet who has lost her way is begging now is a beggar at strangers doors house lost grandmother's house lost she became homeless she now feels homeless and this homelessness is a central unconscious uh, uh painful reality for women patriarchal societies do not give a very very stable uh, view a stable belief among women that the home they belong is theirs a sense of homelessness can occur to them at any time yesterday we were reading that story the 70 year woman muni's wife in a horse and two goats what does she say at the end she feels homeless and she says she will return to her parents house so this house uh uh grandmother's house uh then uh she died and after that she remembers uh she is in a state of homelessness and uh, 
her memory then recreates uh, several images that describe her uh, relationship with the, where she felt homed, where she felt housed, housed. House is a noun, but I think it's a verb. And in Kamala Das, uh, it is a verb. So housing, house, and she is using it uh, with the with the capacity of grammar, which can make it a doing word, not just a naming word, not just a naming word. Can you that I lived in such a house and was proud and loved? I who have lost my way and now and beg now at strangers doors to receive love. So to receive love, this expression came in the second line of the first uh, of the at the beginning of the poem. There is a house now far away where once I received love. And here, at strangers' doors to receive love, and they don't give. So homelessness and, uh, uh, and uh, begging for love. Love is a crucial connection uh, that is must. And uh, she has uh, challenged different, all kinds of norms of the society as a poet. And she created a distinct voice of a woman poet. Would she then get a house? She has to stand like a stranger, like a beggar at the stranger's door to beg love. 